Welcome to the Bald Eagle 242 YouTube channel. Today I've got a 2007 John Deere X300 made on April 25th, 2007. It has the 17 horsepower FH491 V twin engine on it and it has an odd surging issue, but generally it starts right up. Generally that's a carburetor problem, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the carburetor off of this thing and see what we got here. A clogged up air filter can cause problems too, so check your air filter first. Not exactly clean, but not dirty either. You got two 10 millimeter nuts here that have to come off and two 10 millimeter bolts down here that have to come off. Take these top covers off on these, you do have to remove this protective screen here. Probably the first time this carb's ever been off. I'm gonna show the screwdriver down in here and jam it up here. So we've got our linkage here. Should have enough room to get that all the way off of there. Then we can take our linkage loose. Kind of roll that around to the side. And you should be able to get this out. And then there's a spring here that has to come out too. The spring goes in the same hole as the uh, the rod does. I found these little wrenches that come with polishers or routers and stuff like that. Grinders, uh, they work real well to get in here. And you can just take that loose like that. So save these little cheap wrenches that you think you're never gonna need for anything. You can take a standard Craftsman or cheapy wrench too and grind it down and make it fit in here too. Didn't see much come out of that bowl. It just kind of twists off of there. Not as much in there as I anticipated. Actually pretty darn clean. There we go. All right, once you get that pin out, usually that'll slide right out. That's usually not that hard to get out of there. Pull that straight up. Your jet down in here, it's got a flathead screwdriver head on it. Pretty narrow flathead, you gotta get down in this hole. And these can be kind of tight too. Visually, it doesn't look dirty. I can see see light right through it. I don't know how well that'll show up on camera, but. All right, once you get that piece threaded out the bottom, take this piece out. Make sure all these holes are cleaned up. Spray them out real good with carb cleaner and clean this up real good. Doesn't look too bad. Cover one end up and just spray through that. Looks like they're all spraying out, so we'll put that back in. This all back together here. Get this thing back on the mower. I'm gonna get that pretty snug in there so it doesn't vibrate out. I'm gonna go ahead and use this new pin. Another thing to check when you got this apart is kind of shake your float a little bit. Make sure it doesn't have any fuel in it. If these get cracked, they'll fill up with fuel and they won't float. Put your needle back down in there. Hold that in a way it doesn't fall out. Make sure that slides down in there in your fuel inlet. And put your pin back through here. I want to try to get that centered because if it's sticking out too far, your bowl won't fit all the way on. And I'll do it. Until I know for sure this carburetor is going to work okay, I'm not going to replace this bowl gasket. If it leaks a little bit, I'll pull it apart and put a new one on it. Make sure that little gasket is still on there or on here one. It's not on there, this thing will leak like crazy. This is a fuel shut off. When you shut the key off, it shuts the fuel off to keep this thing from backfiring. Not sure we really fixed it, but we'll throw it back on here and see what it does. Might have been something stuck in there we didn't see. 
you guys seen this little five horsepower Briggs motor sitting here too. This is something I'm working on on a go-kart video that the uh, the governor came apart inside the motor. You can kind of see how that's all beat up there, but I got another video rebuilding a 1996 Carter go-kart that hopefully this will go back on and run. All right, when you put this back on here, I think it's easier to hook up your choke linkage first. And then hook up your throttle linkage. And don't forget to put your spring back in that hole too. Once you get that rod in there, your choke lever in there, your spring in there, don't forget your solenoid wire down here on the bottom. And it does only go in one way, it's keyed. What I'll do is just take these nuts and just bolt this back on here directly with no air cleaner on it. See how it runs, that way if I've got to take it back off, I don't have to take as much back apart. Just snug that down very lightly. My fuel line's a pretty loose fit, so we'll go ahead and put the clamp back on it. All right, choke's working, throttle linkage is working. Don't have any washers or parts sitting up in here, so let's try it out and see what we got here. Take a minute to get some fuel in there. I have to do a little more research and see what that hole right there is because if I put my finger over that it doesn't surge. Um, I do know I've got a carburetor kit here for this carburetor. It's a wall barrel K1-LMF. Uh, it's a repair kit and it does come with this piece. In fact it comes with both pieces. There's a bigger one here and a smaller one here. It also comes with the bowl gasket or washer, the rubber part that goes around the top of the bowl, new needle and seat, and then a pin. So I'll go ahead and pull this out of this kit, go ahead and get this piece put on here, and then I think that'll take care of our problem on this thing. All right, I'll go ahead and set that down on top of there. And I'll take a punch, it's a flat tipped, blunt tip punch, and just push that down in there. And that is not real tight down in there, it's probably why it fell out, so I'm gonna put a little bit of Permatex over the top of that too. All right, I'm just going to take a little bit of this gasket maker, and this is not something you generally want to use around fuel, but the way I'm thinking is this should not be open or exposed to fuel up here anyway. Just going to smear a little bit over the top of that. That should be more than enough to hold that in there. I will say, you know, I didn't do a real thorough cleaning on this carburetor for one because once I got into it, I could tell it wasn't that dirty. At the time, I really didn't know what was going on, but you know, in hindsight, I should have looked at that before I pulled the carburetor off. I could have avoided even taking it off to even try to clean it. Sometimes you live and learn, and we lived and learned on this one. Let that set up a little bit, and then we'll try it out here. All right, that's good and set up there now. Let's try this thing out here and see what we got here. I think I did it. I don't think we're going to get much better than that. 
I know this video turned out to be a little longer than it really needed to be because I didn't understand what was going on with it when I first pulled it apart. But anyway, if you've got a surging issue on one of these mowers, obviously check that little plug first. But nine times out of 10, it's going to be a dirty carburetor or bad fuel or possibly a bad gasket where it's sucking air into the carb. So check all those things. That should take care of your surging issue. Also, I didn't show it in this video, but I did crack the hood on this uh, mower when I first got it. I was pressure washing it off and blew the hood shut and cracked it. Anyway, if you have one of these hoods that's cracked, uh, John Deere or Cub Cadet or pretty much any of the plastic mower hoods, I've got a good video that'll show you how to fix those. I'll put a link right up above here. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Till next time.